Welcome to this Hollahan's Hot Topics in Critical Care session. Dr. Sherry Berger here with Dr. Melissa Holohan. Hey, Dr. Holohan, what's going on in the world of critical care this week? Hi, Sherry. Well, this week we're actually going to be talking about a very clinically relevant topic, and that is the accuracy of three different temperature reading techniques and the associated stress response seen in hospitalized dogs. So temperature measurement is certainly an essential part of our day-to-day -day clinical exam. And direct measurement of the core temperature is certainly the gold standard, but of course not a very clinically applicable um, measurement tool. So rectal temperature is typically the most reliable and accurate assessment of core body temperature in the clinic. However, as we know in dogs, this can be a very stressful event for our patients. Um, and in some instances, after potentially like a post-op um, anal gland removal, it may not be appropriate. Uh, so what this study was looking at was different mechanisms or different methods to measure temperature in dogs. And in human medicine, as we know, the axillary site is a pretty frequently used alternative to rectal temperature. And this study also looked at infrared auricular temperature or an otic thermometer used to improve patient compliance and quicker results than the rectal temperature. And so this method actually uses infrared technology to measure the heat emanating from the tympanic membrane. And studies have shown that the tympanic membrane shares vascularization with the hypothalamus via the carotid artery. So we feel that the auricular temperature readings may be expected to be very close reflection of core temperature in dogs. So the objective of this study was to look at the accuracy and the associated stress response of an axillary, auricular, and erectile temperature in hospitalized dogs. The researchers looked at 250 hospitalized dogs at a university setting, and this study was actually done out of Belgium. So these were animals that were just coming into the clinic for a variety of different reasons, and they allowed about 30 minutes or more per patient um, before they started doing the thermometer reading. So it was pretty standardized across each dog. All recordings were done by the same investigator to help with continuity and each measurement was done randomized. So some of the patients got a thermometer um, reading rectally, axillary, and then ear, and then vice versa. So it wasn't um, done in the same order with each patient. Heart rate was recorded before and after, and this was, of course, a measurement of stress. And then particular stress behaviors were recorded and graded on a level of zero to the lowest and four to the highest. And some of the things they looked at were panting with the dogs, shaking, lip licking, vocalization, and a variety of different defensive behaviors, including um, patients trying to turn and bite, or patients that actually needed two individuals to get the thermometer reading, particularly, in many cases, the rectal temperature reading. And then they looked at signalment, uh, analgesic therapy, and length of hospital stay to see if there was any differences between the patients. The results of the study were, were probably um, pretty obvious, but the increased temperature was the highest in those patients that had rectal thermometer readings. Stress scores, again, as expected, were highest in those patients that had a rectal thermometer measurement and were lowest in the uh, patients with axillary thermometer readings, so the one between the um, axilla. And the uh, auricular or um, ear thermometer readings were um, in the, the middle of both uh, parameters. So the mean values were pretty similar between the axillary and the auricular temperature readings. They're about 37 degrees Celsius, which is about uh, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the rectal temperature was approximately one degree higher at 38 degrees, which is about 100, 100.4 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. This study did find that the gender and coat length had a significant influence on the results of the temperature. But there was no, uh, find no direct effect between dehydration, body condition, analgesic, the age, reproductive status, and uh, operator experience. And that was compared from the beginning patients in the study to the you know, 249th, 250th dog. So this study concluded that the axillary and the auricular or um, ear thermometer was reliable and less stressful alternatives to the estimate rectal temperature in dogs. However, they did go on to note that further studies are needed. There were not a lot of patients in this study that had low, or sorry, high temperatures. Many of the patients had a normal to low temperature. So until they can make a direct 
recommendation, they need to look at a, a larger subset of patients, particularly those with uh, high temperatures. So I think the main take-home point from this is, although we can't make direct conclusions yet, uh, the axillary and the auricular uh, temperature readings are certainly a reliable mechanism um, of taking temperatures. And I think particularly in our hospital, we use this for patients that are uh, very stressed in the hospital and certainly taking a rectal temperature uh, may uh, limit the or may decrease the safety of our staff. So we do have um, axillary readings that are taken and we also have a thermometer where we can do um, axillary or sorry, um, auricular readings or the otic readings. So that's all this week on Hollihan's Hot Topics.